What's up guys, today we're gonna to talk about how to run further and faster in that distance running specifically. I'm gonna give you a little workout to train your mechanics and a little workout to train your physiology. All right, so for running further and faster, we need to talk about efficiency, and there's two different sides of the efficiency coin. One side is going to be our physiology, which I'm gonna to get to in the second half. We're gonna talk about a gnarly workout you can do that's gonna train up your ability to, to increase your stamina and your run speed, but we also need to talk about your mechanics, your, uh, the energy you're putting out, and uh, the force production that occurs. We wanna make sure that every movement in your body is productively moving you forward, and we wanna avoid any energy that's wasted. And as you can imagine, a lot of runners out there and human beings out there aren't the most efficient beings in the block. We're, we're running with a tire slightly inflated or a tire out of alignment or a bolt that's a little loose, so we're kinda roughly driving down the road as opposed to being that finely tuned race car. So for this drill and to really improve our mechanics, I wanna talk about rotation. Every time I run, my upper body has to resist this rotation of the lower body. I've talked about this in other videos, but we think about it, every time I run, this leg starts to swing out the back further. Notice that if I'm very loose, when my leg swings out the back, my whole body wants to go with it. That's that rotation that I'm talking about. The purpose of my upper body and my arm swing is to resist that rotation to keep my shoulders pretty square. So a lot of times we say, hey, I wanna keep my shoulders square to the road, I don't want them to twist and move around. I don't want to either, but what I am saying is that just by keeping your shoulders square and straight, that is that active resistance that I'm talking about. So notice that instead of going here, out the back, when I swing out the back here, my upper body is going this way, right? So I have this contralateral swing, and this swing keeps my upper body and shoulders square. The way we're gonna dial this in, and this is what our core strength really does for us with the running, is something called the stable arm drill, and this really hits this point by taking our arm swing away. So what you're gonna go ahead and do is you're just gonna to start to run. I'm just in camera, so I'm gonna show you running in place, but in a second I'm gonna show you some footage of me actually running forward, where here you're noticing your arm swing is going to your side. Well, for about 20 meters, what I want you to do is run your arms out straight. And you're gonna notice that things are a little tighter, a little stiffer, a little more awkward. You're gonna run out here for about 20 meters, run back regular, see how that feels. Then you're gonna go arms together, run out here for 20 meters. You're gonna notice that your arms are gonna bounce around. I just want you to notice that a little bit. And then for the final bit, I want you to go hands together, no vertical or lateral movement whatsoever. And for that to occur, two things are gonna happen. One, your belly's gonna be a little tighter, so you're gonna notice how hard you have to work here. The second thing that's gonna happen is that your stride is gonna shorten up significantly, and you're gonna take these little strutter steps. I have two things to say about that. One, this is one reason why we naturally adopt a higher cadence, because when my body goes into a level of difficulty, that quicker cadence is a more efficient way to run. The second thing with this, when I start to run with my hands together, it's like running with a stick up my butt a little bit. I become very, very stiff, so much so that all hip extension is taken away. When I can't resist this hip extension, what my body does, as opposed to going here, right, all of a sudden it goes here really small. And what happens when we get tired when we run? Well, we start upright, we start to slump. And we start to slump, we start to stress, our shoulders stiffen up, and then all of a sudden our arm swing gets stiffer and it starts to go away. Why is this a big deal? Well, because when I lose my arm swing, I lose my ability to efficiently resist rotation, which basically means when I'm out on my longer run and I'm trying to run far and fast and I'm trying to be efficient, the stiffer I get here, which basically means it's like putting the parking brake on a little bit. I can still drive forward, all of a sudden I've just got a little resistance, I'm fighting myself. It's almost like doing a little mini variation of this drill, my stride automatically shortens up. So what I wanna do, this drill is gonna teach me, hey, how to get a little bit tighter and more connected here. That's gonna help get that core engagement going. That's the reason number one. And then the reason number two for this drill is that it's gonna reinforce how important posture and arm swing is. And if I can keep my shoulders and arms moving, that's gonna help keep my legs moving so that mechanically, I'm gonna be efficient all the way down the road. All right, for the second piece, we're gonna be talking about training your physiology. One of the bigger aspects of being able to run 
faster over further distances is I gotta earn it, right? I gotta do the work that's gonna get me there. Now it's very common, especially if you're on the newer runner side, that a lot of your runs are gonna fall into the same gear, the same intensity, which might be easy to, kinda like the easy hard, where it feels good to push a little bit, but you're just still laughing with your friends, not doing anything that's uh, vomit inducing, shall we say. Uh, this workout, we're gonna do a little vomit inducing work. It's going to be 10 by 400 meter efforts. And you could do this ideally on a track, but it doesn't have to be on a track in all honesty. This could be a roughly a 90 second to two and a half minute loop uh, around your neighborhood that's reasonably flat, that of course doesn't have stop signs and stop lights so you can run continuously. And the, the goal is that you have a consistent loop so that you can measure your pace through each one. We're gonna work on training our ability to sustain those higher speeds for longer times. What I'm gonna target is roughly our 10K speed and then our 5K speed. So if you're that person who's looking to run easier, usually that easy pace is what would equate to what we could hold for a marathon or a half marathon, 13 miles or 26 plus. But what I wanna do is, hey, if I'm going all out, what's the speed that I could only handle for three miles? What's the speed I can only handle for six? That's what we're talking about for today. And we're gonna go one through 10, you're gonna do all your intervals around the track and your rest interval is gonna be roughly half the amount of time it took you to do the interval itself. So for easy math, let's say your loop took you two minutes, you're gonna rest for one minute in between before you go again. If it took you two and a half, you're gonna rest 115. If it took you only 90 seconds, you're only gonna rest 45. So that, that half rest ratio to work ratio is gonna keep this thing, uh, you're not gonna to recover too much, but you'll still have just enough to run well. Numbers three, six, nine, and 10 are gonna be slightly faster than the others. And what I wanna target for numbers three, six, nine, and 10 is gonna be that 5K pace. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna get you comfortable running consistently at that high 10K effort, which is a challenge. And then the three, six, nine, and 10, you're gonna spike it. You're gonna go a little bit faster and uh, that's gonna train you to run faster on tired legs. It's gonna teach you a lot about pacing. It's gonna give you that physiology to be able to handle these higher speeds for longer periods. If you were to add something like this in at least once a week for the next four to six weeks, you're really gonna start to see some progress and some change in your running. You pair that with really good mechanics and my friend, you are gonna be an unbeatable runner. Hey guys, got one more thing for you. Really hope you liked this uh, distance running video. Uh, and if you did, go ahead and let us know. Hit that like button down below. If you have any comments or questions on the workout we did, on that running drill we talked about, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. We'll definitely get back to you if we can. Uh, subscribe to our channel, The Run Experience. We've got so many great videos on running tips, on running drills, on injury prevention, on strength training, everything you need to know as a runner, we got something for you, so definitely hit that subscribe. And finally, we got a little gift for you. Uh, if you want two weeks of free programming on how to run a little bit taller, run a little bit smoother and lighter, on how to be a little bit of a stronger athlete, runner, and human being, uh, how to be a little injury proof too, definitely subscribe to our, uh, no, don't definitely don't subscribe, definitely hit this link in this video. If you're on a mobile device, there's a link down in the description. It's gonna take you to our two-week quick start program that we wanna give to you for free. All you need to do is once you're on that page is enter your name and your email. We'll be able to send you that quick start program. I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm so excited about it. We definitely want you in there. And again, thanks for watching.